I'm going to show real quickly why it's really difficult, almost impossible to adjust the charge on a mini split for an inverter system. This is a 9000 BTU 1520, 15 ER 25 CR inverter unit. With the fixed orifice system here, you can go through and adjust the charge and get it to where it needs to be. This is the rated EER versus charge. You measure the superheat. Got two parameters, outdoor condenser fan, return wet bulb. And that's what I've been doing, taking data here. But in reality, what's happening is the outdoor unit I've got here, this is not the actual number, it has an electronic expansion valve that's inside. And then the control system is going through and looking at a thermistor on the out discharge line, the compressor. It probably has another one here on the heat exchanger. And there's also one on the indoor unit. So I'm doing all these tests and stuff. It's adjusting the metering to try to keep the superheat what it wants to have inside the inside unit. Uh, the way this works is both of these lines coming out of the outside unit are cold because the expansion valve is actually inside the outside unit. So you get a cold liquid. Both the pressures are about the same. And here's some reading here that says that Simple ones use a single thermistor at the evaporator outlet. Some use two thermistors, one at the inlet, one at the outlet. Use a temperature differential as a superheat. So, I've been trying to go through and measure some of the stuff here to see what's going on. And here's a little showing an electronic expansion valve. It's expansion valve, it's computer controlled, generally I have a stepper motor and it's adjusting back and forth to keep the parameters the way it wants to. So, particular unit I've been looking at here, last night at 10 o'clock, for 1048 it was 546 watts, superheat I measured was 14.8 with the Testo, pressure 135. Here's the temperature of the two lines and the difference in temperature. And so this running here at midnight was 80 degrees outside, 446 watts, 28 degrees of superheat. Difference between the pipes a little bit less, 24. The two pipes are 4165. So all the units very efficient, only 446 watts, but it's not full load. Well anyways this morning 655 in the morning it's roughly in the same range and then by 810 the outside temperature had risen and here at 853 when it ran around 84 to 85 degrees the outside unit started to run really fast and I've noticed this in some other tests what's going on uh, this particular mystery brand I'm fooling with when the outside temperature gets above say 84, 85, 86, it commands the compressor to go way quicker. So the wattage went up and then here the pressure's dropping because it's pumping more refrigerant and it's probably going ahead and opening up the electronic expansion valve. So the superheat here is 32, 35. And by 920 it was up to 40 degrees of superheat which is really high. And the pressure was down to 82 and then the input line was down to 29 so you're going to end up having a freeze up so it's gone through and running out of refrigerant here now some of these systems actually have an accumulator and I'm not sure if mine does but you don't want to have the liquid line go below freezing so I went ahead here and added an ounce of our uh, 410A with the scale and I added 1.2 ounces again or a total of 2.2 and then here it is 20 minutes later the pressure had gone up to 97 the superheat was down to 30 and so I'm into the range here 38.5 degrees get a lot of cooling out so in order to go ahead and try to adjust the charge which is you're not supposed to do this and it's very difficult to do you need to have the unit going full bore and you need to have the inside fan of course going full tilt 
and you need to have it to where you're sensing you're running out of refrigerant, which means it, this valve is doing what it wants to, and then you've got this too cold because you're running out of refrigerant. And all these mild conditions here, it's all okay, and it's going through and closing the loop to keep the uh, refrigerant the way it wants to, because it's not a fixed orifice here, like this, fixed orifice. It's basically like, this is a thermostatic EEV. It's actually an electronic one, which is even more, uh, this is, these work with having a sense bulb on the evaporator coil. The electronic one can use its own smarts here and have, it can be set up to do all sorts of crazy things. It can be to where if it senses the discharge temperature to be too high, it can go ahead and reduce the compressor down. Uh, it can do a whole bunch of things depending on the way the software is set up and the way the sensors are. Now, if you got buy a name brand, a lot of this engineering stuff's all uh, explained out. I have a mystery brand here I'm fooling with, and so I'm just using bits and pieces off of other manuals. And I want to show this that when you start going here and measuring the suction line, the pressure, and the superheat, it may not be what you think it is. This is true superheat, but you don't really know what the heck this valve is set out. And only here what I've got to where I've got full load, the unit's going as fast as it wants to go, ambient temperature's really high, that I ran out of refrigerant. So I just added just a little bit more. Now the proper way is to go through and reclaim all the refrigerant and add back what you need on the nameplate and then you add the fractional grams and ounces you need if you have extra line lengths. But uh, the unit I have doesn't have any data, so I'm playing around just seeing what goes. Then after this, I'll show the actual test. We've added roughly about an ounce of gas. I raised this just a little bit. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes for this to equalize. Okay, by adding a little bit of gas, I've raised the temperature of the smaller line here, which goes to the evaporator coil, and I've dropped the superheat some. It's still a little bit too low. Adding gas back isn't a good thing for 410A because um, in a small amount you can get away with it. With a larger amount you really need to reclaim, recover everything and put it all in because uh, I'm adding it back in as a liquid which is good. But if some has been leaked out or it was wrong because somebody else has messed with it, you kind of don't know where you stand because it's, uh, it's a blend. So by adding some refrigerant, I've raised the temperature slightly of the line that's going to the evaporator coil. I've actually dropped this a little bit. It was about 65, down down to 60, which means uh, the coil that's inside is probably closer to say 35 to be say 58 or something like that. I've actually got a set of probes like this for testo. I got one ordered so I can put one closer to the unit to see what the drop is across actually the uh, entire coil with the line set. So both of these are cold of course, that's why they're insulated. There's a superheat at 35. Again, this is kind of, I'm doing this as an engineering experiment, but you really don't know kind of is the unit right now is it's full command to full on and full tilt and that's about the only way that you can really sense whether you're low on gas because otherwise the expansion valve in there is commanded and closing the loop but I think right now I'm out of the I'm up against the rail where it's going full tilt so that's the only time you can really sense on this cheapy whether you might be low on gas 
that's why using a set of gauges and stuff like this is really kind of futile. The problem of adding a small amount of gas is liquid is that here's the liquid coming in. You can see it in the vial, and if I crack this open, I've got this one closed, you still have a lot in the line. So it's really difficult to gauge a small amount what the heck you're doing. And that's why you normally, an unknown unit, better to go ahead and hook the recovery device, pull all the charge out, and then weigh it all back in. That's the proper way. And I'm not recommending anybody try to adjust a unit like this because, honestly, I've been screwing around with this for two, three days, just trying to understand the parameters on this. And I've learned more with this test than I had reading the bunch of books and stuff. Got a good healthy appreciation for it. Okay here it is 942. I added one ounce of gas and had 1.2 ounces so a total of 2.2 and this has dropped the superheat from 40.8 down to 30. Pressure went up some. Delta T across the pipes is a little bit less and it's raised the temperature on the smaller line from 29 which is way too low up to 38 and a half and that was about a minute or two ago it's 97 degree 97 psi there's see 30 degrees of superheat delta t 21 38 and a half on the small line 59. See, this is good in the sense this has dropped a little bit. Uh, so it's not, it's completely boiled across in the coil, but it has a little bit maybe uh, return in the sense that it's not just like boiling earlier in the coil. And I may have got the charge about right. This is a pain in the ass. Now, this type of stuff here is because I've had the gauges running some and you get some leakage on here. I may have to replace the valves on there, but um, you can hit a pressure is equal to zero, but you really need to undo the gauges and stuff like that. I'm about ready. Done on this test here. This is a cheap set of tubes. All the ones I normally use for R22. These are for R10. These are about brand new. and See how the, they got a hernia problem. This is a cheapy set made in China. There's some there on the one from the gas. There's a the temperature that's about 20 feet away from the inside unit, 70, about 73 inside, 64%. And the unit turned on to 62 to kind of force it to go super cool. It's really undersized for the room, the area in the whole house was purposely done like that to try to just pull humidity out and keep it sort of at bay. Now I've changed it with the remote here to be at 72, so the fan, internal fan speed is turned down and then the outside unit's going to go ahead and turn way lower. Okay, we're still 1,090 watts, 1224 volt amperes, 36.09 kilowatt hours, 51 hours we've been running here with the test meter. 